In this video, we're going to go through some of my recommendations when it comes to data storytelling in Power BI. I'm going to give you some general design advice, and I'm also going to show you some of the techniques that you can use in order to tell your stories with your data while making sure that the interactive elements of your Power BI remains intact. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So in contrast with a lot of the visualization tools out there, Power BI is at its best when it comes to having an interactive element within its reports, giving users the ability to slice and dice the data to explore the data themselves. Now, because of this dynamic element in Power BI, it's not very easy to create a curated analysis versus, let's say, creating a static image by itself. And that's because the charts and graphs within your Power BI reports need to make sense no matter how it's sliced and diced by your users. So instead of focusing on the traditional route of showing you how to create curated designs, I want to focus instead on enabling your users to uncover the insights within your reports while making sure that the dynamic elements in your report remains intact. So when it comes to telling a story, you want to make sure that you're always answering the question why. This adds a bit of an extra context to your visuals, making it easy to recognize if the numbers that you're seeing are good or bad. If you look at the key metrics here in this report at the top, you'll see it's a combination of colors and arrows, which at a glance tells you users if the numbers are going up and down and what that signifies if it's good or bad. The next technique that you can use is to make sure to add contextual filters for your users. So looking at the same example, for example, you have the ability to cho choose between which ranges of data you want to see in your report. So for example, if we choose to see 2022, it will filter the report, only show you the 2022 data, which your users might be interested in to see. So for example, here we've selected 2022 in our range, which changes all of the visuals, the charts that we have in this report only show the data for 2022, which is what your users might want to see. And this type of custom filters aren't normally available to you when you're creating your reports, but it's pretty easy to implement and it makes it easy for your users to pick the ranges that they're normally would be interested to see. So for example, some of my customers would usually prefer to see their data by fiscal year, so by making this option readily available for your users, it makes it easier for them to visualize their stories within your report. The next thing that you can do is to take advantage of the dynamic elements in Power BI. Now you probably noticed that as I changed my filter here, so does the titles within each individual visuals. So here, for example, it's showing us between 2022 January to December. But as I change that to, let's say, going back to the last 12 months, it gives you the range of those dynamic dynamically within those titles. So these dynamic calculations are not very complicated to implement, but it gives your users a lot more context to the bar charts as you slice and dice your data. Not only that, there are a lot of other dynamic elements that you can add in your report to give some more contextual information, such as tooltips. So for example, as you can see here, we have some question marks on next to the visuals. So at the moment we have them on the KPI numbers at the top, as well as on the bars on the top right hand side. And if you hover over them, you will get some contextual information about what else you can do on this uh, chart or some information about how this value is calculated. And again, this could be dynamic based on what you slice and dice within your reports. If you want to add even greater context in your pages, so making sure that you are taking advantage of the space that you have available, you should consider using some page tooltips within your visuals. So you'll notice that we have this visual here, our hires table, which shows us the hires for our fictional company for the last 12 months. If I hover over any of these bars, you'll see that it gives us a breakdown of our hires broken down by gender, giving us even more more contextual information about these bars, allowing our users to dig deeper into the data that they can see. And along with this, you should also think about using something called the smart narratives, which has been updated recently to work as a tooltip, which is a way to tell your data in a natural language while making sure that it's dynamic and it changes as you make your slices within your data. 
Now, moving on to the charts themselves, you want to enable kind of different ways to highlight your data within a report, which you might want to if you want to tell certain stories. Perhaps you want to be able to highlight a category in a line chart, which allows your users to focus on a single element and kind of see how it is compared to other values within your report. So here, for example, in this report, we have a single line chart here, which is a total sales by different categories. Now, if we just had all of these lines in this chart, it wouldn't really highlight a certain category for us. But now you see that as I select different categories here in our selection, the corresponding category gets highlighted, but not really making the others disappear. This makes it easy for us to see how that trend is going for that category while not losing sight of the big picture. You can also use some simple formatting, like highlighting the highest or lowest values in your charts, making it easy for your users to determine what is doing well or what is doing bad. So here, for example, we are trying to visualize total sales by uh, different uh, months here against different countries. So as I make a selection here to choose between different countries, so from UK to USA, you'll see that the dynamic elements within this report changes. So the months that it highlights, both the highest and the lowest changes accordingly. If you have lots of data points or categories, it's sometimes better to only show the relevant information to your users so they're focused on the right bits of the details. So in this case, for example, we used a technique called the top N, which allows your users to see the top five sales by country or by product so that they don't have to see all of those different categories if there are too many. So they can simply just focus on those ones that have the highest impact. Uh, so, for example, here we have a dynamic top end sales here, different, um, which controls the top sales by country and by product. And as you make a dynamic selection here, that also changes those uh, values that are being shown here to be to show those number of items. There are also other visuals that are available to you, like let's say the error bars that allows you to highlight any data points that deviate from a normal range, which could potentially be a point of interest. Finally, I think using images is an effective way to engage your users. So earlier we looked at using colors and icons to signify values going up or down, if it's good or bad. But you can also use simple visuals like here, for example, we're using star ratings to sort of summarize the performance or ratings for each of these movie titles. It gives you the individual rating for each of these titles, as well as the overall rating, which summarizes all of those ratings of the movie movies that you have selected, making it dynamic and gives you a kind of better story. It doesn't just give you individual ratings for these movies. It also creates an aggregate rating across all of the titles that you've selected, making it easy and dynamic. And that's really it for my recommendations for data storytelling in Power BI. All the techniques that we looked at here today is simply a means to an end to understand and answer the questions why and so what for the business. By implementing these techniques, you can ensure that you're telling your stories in Power BI while making sure that the dynamic elements within your reports stay usable and intact. All the techniques that we looked at in this video is something that I covered already in previous videos in the past. So if you want to know how to implement them in more detail, I'll leave the links to all those videos in the description box below. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.